Welcome to the Blackout Podcast, where I get to talk to amazing people who do amazing things. And today I'm really, really excited because this has been like a year and change in the yes. making. <laughs> uh, but I'm really happy to have my friend, awesome human being, Otto. Um, Danielle Gato, thanks for coming to the podcast today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, finally. Finally, <laughs> finally. Okay, so um, thanks so much for making the time. I'll try to make sure I use it and uh, you know i don't stretch too much but let's start for me like um i remember for me it was with your email address mm -hmm. right because you know you get the gmails or the hot mails <laughs> or the you know whatever but yours was like spellman i'm like hmm, i know you know that's cool so yeah. we'll start with spellman how did that happen wow this is actually like a crazy story so i'm from the bahamas and Spellman had an initiative back when I was in high school, um, recruiting from like certain countries around the world. They came to the Bahamas. There was a nationwide competition for this one full scholarship wow. <laughs> to attend Spellman. Like all schools, public and private in the Bahamas could apply. And after like a process of applying and interviews, like I won, um, I'm oh, cutting it down like <laughs> tremendously, yeah. but um, it was an amazing experience and like really a blessing. And that's how I ended up at Spelman. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I knew you were Spelman. I didn't know this story. I didn't even know it was a competition. Why did you decide to apply? I applied to many schools, um, mm. but uh, Spelman was just one that stood out. And of course, if they're offering you like a full ride, like mm. why not take it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you do the competition, you f find out you won. What yeah. was, how did that feel? I cried. Like, Holy even in shit. the interview, in the final interview round, like, I cried because I could not believe that me, mm. of all people, had made it that far. Um, coming from a small island in the Bahamas that, you know, very pe uh, few people even know about, like, around the world, um, competing on the national stage among so many other talented individuals. Mm. I mean, it was amazing. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I felt very blessed, still blessed. <laughs> what did you decide to study there? So I studied biology. Um, from, I guess, middle school, I was always, like, pretty interested in science. And, you know, when you're the smart kid, they'll, like, push you towards that route anyway. So that, <laughs> that's what happened. I studied biology. <laughs> Why biology, though? Well, out of all of the other, like, main sciences, chem, physics, those were basically the options. Mm. Uh, biology was just more enjoyable for me. Oh. Yeah. And then how was your experience at Spelman? Ah, <sighs> Spelman was life-changing. Like, I always tell people, like, Spelman really, like, elevated me onto the track or the journey to becoming the woman that I am today. Like, there were so many amazing opportunities that I was afforded. Um, mm -hmm. I got to travel to many different countries. Um, the scholarship program that I was a part of, we were based, like basically a community service group and so we did a lot of outreach not only in the u.s but around the world so oh, wow. traveling through those avenues as what well are some of the countries you went to for this program? i went to nigeria oh, i wow. went to panama uh yeah nice. <laughs> um yeah spelman was great it was amazing seeing like engineers doctors college presidents like so many people who were doing amazing things mm. and they looked like me Yes. You know, that yes. that was empowering. Like that was the first time that I've ever been around so many black professionals who were really change makers mm. um, in their respective fields. And that just gave me such empowerment, um, such inspiration to know that I literally can do anything I that I put my to. mind to. Like yep. they're all around me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so let's rewind mm -hmm. a little bit further back. Growing up, was this something you really wanted to be? I always was interested in like science and medicine. 
Um, so I guess all of my life I was on the track to, I guess, doing medicine. So biology would have been the foundation for that in undergrad and then medical school would have been the next step. Mm. But for some reason, after you know, going through undergrad and doing all of these things to prepare me, like medicine started to not look like the ultimate goal for me anymore. What changed? I wanted to have a lot more flexibility. Mm. I realized that I didn't want to, and shout out to all of the doctors, like some of my best friends went on to become doctors um, and they are doing amazing things. But I wanted to have a lot more freedom, a lot more flexibility, mm. um, a lot more agency and control over my daily life. And I knew that medicine probably would not be the avenue, the ultimate avenue for me to take. Um, mm. And so I started to, you know, waver and look into other directions. And I ended up doing a master's in uh, biology as well, research based though. So not medicine, basically, you're sitting in the lab and you are investigating certain um, research questions to come out with an outcome to contribute to, you know, the medical world, basically. What was your research on? So my lab studies bone development, um, basically from a molecular and embryological level, uh, understanding how craniofacial abnormalities form. Okay, so, now <laughs> <laughs> so head head bone research, basically understanding like how like embryologically do these um, deformities happen, like basically as the embryo is growing, mm. and to use that knowledge to translate into medical uh, therapeutic uh, interventions, basically. Wow. <laughs> putting it lightly <laughs> yeah yeah because i'm trying to wonder like what, what do you do do you like i guess put people you know there's that machine that makes a lot of noise you know it's this big machine that <laughs> no they put no no oh, nothing okay. like that right. like we're literally at the molecular level we're looking at cell growth like oh wow so, so lots of a uh, microscope <laughs> exactly so we're using a microscope we're dissecting like stuff like that not no big machines or anything like that <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 yeah how was that experience for you it was very interesting so i actually did my master's hair at dow like that's how i ended up in halifax and coming from an institution like spelman where everyone around me looked like me i felt very empowered just walking into a room and seeing that and then basically being one of the only black um, individuals in my department uh, the only black person in my lab. Like I'm not. Mm. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I felt a lot of imposter mm. <laughs> syndrome, and um, it, it it was interesting. Like it, it was hard. Um, the academic rigor of the program itself, layered with imposter syndrome, and you know moving to another country and you know a different culture. It was very difficult. Um, many times I wanted to quit, but you know, there's something in me that never can bring myself to quit. So, <laughs> <laughs> something that I, you know, really uh, set my mind to. Yeah. Um, so I finished, and I'm I'm proud of myself that I made it to the end. Holy to be honest, smokes. I mean, <laughs> was was there any particular reason you decided to choose Dal? I knew so many Bahamians who oh. went to Dow. Like, I don't think um, people who live here realize like a lot of international students come here because it's a lot easier than going to the US. Um, there are many programs or careers that we would be interested in that aren't necessarily offered at home in the Bahamas. Mm. Um, so we would have to look elsewhere for higher education. But I knew many people who went to Dow, so it really wasn't a big deal. <laughs> I mean, apart from the whole yeah. thing that you're the only, you know, black person mm -hmm. in your lab and stuff, yeah. how was your experience in general? I think grad school is a very different experience from undergrad. It, it wasn't like, oh, you're living in a dorm and you're meeting a lot of people. It was basically like academia for science, like mm. very much so like publishing culture, like, you know, the pressure of publishing. Um, but it was a, a learning lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but OK, so outside school, how was yeah. Halifax for you? Oh, I love Halifax. Halifax is like a sweet medium of you know, not so fast paced and not too slow. Mm. Coming from an island, like I don't like 
very like hectic city so i i do enjoy halifax that's why i'm still here <laughs> i freaking love halifax yeah um okay so uh you know yes you're brainy and smart and fashion cranial <laughs> all that stuff but um one thing that I found out about you was like you also do beauty pageants. I'm like, how do you balance that? Like, you know, I'm here <laughs> doing my science research, but also I'm going to do the work and stuff. So I did um, the pageant lifestyle um, after undergrad, but before I started my master's. So a little break in between. Mm. And um, all of my life, you know, family members and friends have always said, oh, you know, you should pursue pageant and modeling. You have the look. And I thought that, it, OK, finally, I'll give this a chance. Mm. But what I wanted to, I guess, bring to pageantry, which I thought was lacking, was to show that, you know, women can be multifaceted. Like you mm. can be beautiful. You can also be smart and like have something going for yourself. And that that was my whole inspiration behind going <laughs> into a pageant because I would never think like, you know, me as a scientist and a researcher that I'd have an interest in that. But like I was proud to like show that, you mm. know, like we can be basically anything and, uh, well, and everything. <laughs> true. And how was that experience? It was hard. It was difficult. Like, I don't think people realize how much work goes into it. Like, you have to be, like, physically, first of all, ready to, like, put yourself out there on the big stage. Mm. And two, like, deal with, like, the mental aspect of it. It's very competitive. You're basically opening yourself to criticism from, mm. you know, everyone. Yep. So it is difficult um, in that sense. But it taught me so much about myself, you know made me a lot more resilient because there were some crazy things going on <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes and you just literally have to like focus on like your you know end goal basically right. so yeah and um okay so i know you have family and friends saying you need to do this you look great all mm -hmm. that stuff um how did you decide which of the pageants to compete in and what was the process for actually getting in the pageant itself so if it was any pageant it will it would have only been miss universe bahamas just because like that's the main pageant system in the bahamas like that's the one that has like the better reputation or i guess a better following mm. um now miss world bahamas uh within the past i guess five to six years has also elevated but it at that time, it would have only been Miss Universe Bahamas for me. Mm. And it was a simple process. You submit an application, you do an interview, answer a few questions. You know, they obviously look at you, how you present yourself. And then from there, you, um, I guess, are chosen. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> when you get um, put in the, you know, shortlisted with the other ladies. Yeah. Do you get any training? Yes. What what what, um, what happens from then till the actual event? Yeah. So there's like I guess three times out of a week we're meeting, we're training, <laughs> um, we're organizing for the pageant night show because you know like there's a, an opening number, like a closing number. You have to know like which exit to go <laughs> on, like which entrance to come on. Yeah. Uh, lots of coordination, lots of behind the scenes. Mm. Um, also community outreach we did like things within the community you know as a group as a brand uh lots of yeah lots of different things not just pageant night a lot went into preparing to get to that and then on the night step. and then on the night itself <sighs> showtime <laughs> <laughs> showtime i remember so our opening number we were in our costumes um and i won like best costume my costume was amazing but we were basically like behind the curtain standing on stage being mm. judged before the pageant even began oh, shit. <laughs> and then when the curtains uh open it was our opening number in our costumes it, it was very exciting what was the i'm costume? not gonna lie um it was a take on uh our history in the bahamas with like the seminal indian culture um we we can get into that but that's a a, <laughs> a whole nother story but basically they were once uh, inhabitants of the Bahamas. So it was a, a tribute to that. Uh, oh. Red, gold, and black. It, stunning. <laughs> Amazing. <Nice. laughs> and then, so first uh, opening number happens, then what? Then we go behind, like, 
we're ripping off the costumes <laughs> to change into swimsuit and then come swimsuit and we're back in line oh, <laughs> and shit. get it ready for swimsuit yeah. while there's entertainment like a soloist or like a dance number mm. <laughs> and it was basically that for each category we're running backstage ripping off getting, <laughs> <laughs> getting into the next number so yeah Holy that's shit. that's basically what it's like <laughs> and then i guess overall um did what was your overall experience and what did you get out of taking part in the Miss Universe Bahama? I feel like apart from just learning more about myself and like what I want out of life, like how I under understand like how the world works, it was more so like the feedback that I got from my community. Like so many people that I didn't know reaching out to me and thanking me for just being a representation of something different. Mm. Um for me also the island that I'm from, which is Andros, like we don't really have contestants in beauty pageants very often. Mm. Um, so that was big, like the whole island rallying behind me because, you know, we finally had someone representing us. Mm. Um, and also like just being an inspiration to women and young girls. Like mm. the, I think that was the most amazing part because as a beauty queen, of course, you know, they love you, you're pretty and all of that. But like when I, you know, would mentor and like go to speak in conferences and stuff like that, we talk about like future planning or, you know, what do you want to be? Uh, how, how can you love yourself more to elevate to, you know, be this person that you aspire to be? It's not just about looks like what do you look like inside? Like, how do you feel inside? That's what's emanating outwardly. So mm. I think more so like the mentorship aspect that came after and like being able to reach and like touch so many lives of young women and girls like that was probably the most rewarding experience for me. After? Yeah. So like immediately after like you know people would want to do like press like inviting me to different events. Why are they inviting you? Miss Andrus, that was my title. <laughs> So, I didn't want to say that. What yeah. you to say yourself? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, you know, you have... I, I love that when I was talking to you, I just kept... It's like I said, you're like this onion and you keep peeling <laughs> back layers. layers. <laughs> and then we find out that, oh, okay, you know, it's not enough that you're doing all the signs with the brain and how to help, you know, all that stuff you do. And then being a beauty queen, but you're also right. Yeah. And I, I mean, this also, you know... The title for the book, They Never Told Us That Black Is Beautiful. I love that you kind of highlight the Black is Beautiful right in the center of the book. Yeah. And then They Never Told Us is kind of just hidden there. Yeah. Was that deliberate? And it absolutely was deliberate. Um, because someone asked me, like, why did you choose this title? Well, I just want, want you to, first of all, focus on Black is Beautiful. Mm. But they can mean so many different things. Like, this is not you know, just like a racially charged piece. Like, I think someone would think that at first when they read the title, like they can mean anything. Mm. And from my collective experience, like all of the things that I gained from traveling, growing up in the Bahamas, going to Spelman, they can mean literally the people in your own community, things that you encounter when you travel. Like I said, like being a, you know, in a place where you are a minority, and you don't feel seen, you, you, know, you don't feel heard, they can mean so many different things. They can mean yourself because you were not taught that you were beautiful growing up. Mm. So it's more so like focus on black is beautiful and open to embark on what exactly that means, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. Why did you feel the need to write this book though? I mean, you know, you had your <laughs> platform of being a beauty queen. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like mentorship through writing can reach, you know, further lengths, right? I would love for this book to just be distributed throughout the entire African diaspora, which in like, I can't fully like go to every country and like talk to young women, young girls, young boys about what appreciating and loving themselves means but I can write about it mm. and it can reach everywhere mm. and it's basically like all of the things not all because obviously I couldn't put everything in this book mm -hmm. and for the age that I wanted to reach it has to be you know a certain at a certain level 
But all of the things that I wish that I knew、mm. as a child that I only learned after coming into adulthood、mm. and going on a journey myself, like this is what it's all about. Like. Let's start here,、mm-hmm. <laughs> right? the The reprogramming of our collective mind as Black people starts at the younger generations、yeah. and the future generations, right? So let's get this book in the hands of as many children as we can, because that's going to be the key. Wow! To to see the change that we want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what 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 was that phrase though? Black is beautiful, mean to you. It means it means so much, but I will say like you know you know that feeling you get like when you eat your favorite meal,、mm-hmm. you see like your favorite person, you watch your favorite movie, like it's like a tingling sensation, right inside.、Uh, that's how I feel about myself.、Um, but that took a journey, you、mm. know. I want every child, like who reads this book, after they read this book, to feel that way about themselves. So special, so loved, so affirmed. Now that they know, like it starts within. Like、mm. no one can can give you this. No one can validate you. Like、mm. it truly starts within. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. We we we've, we've talked about a couple of things, and I said I didn't want to take too much of the time, but I cannot. Let you go without asking this question. You know, you know you've accomplished a lot. You know, you think so? I, I mean, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, yeah, I do think so. So, so here's the thing.、Um, you know, competitions are they can really mess up with a person,、mm-hmm. right? But at the same time. It's we we are living in a world where there are just few opportunities and a lot of people that want them.、Mm-hmm. So one way to do it is kind of to compete, right? Yeah. And you've struggled. You've had negative and positive experiences. You build this, you know, platform you have now. Yeah. But you're also giving back, right? Because、mm-hmm. you're you are saying is like, look, I did this thing. And you know, I don't have two heads. I, I just have one head, two eyes. I'm like you. I look like you, and you can do this thing. So, like, it's it's very inspiring. Yeah. Right. But the question is, like, does it ever get too heavy? Do you feel like you know you have all this? I guess big ass weight on your shoulders that you have to carry. I think I used to feel that way, especially when I was trying to figure out, like, if I wanted to actually pursue medicine or go into another route. I yes, I used to feel that way, and I got to a point where I realized that some things that I was doing was basically for exterior validation.、Mm. So basically, the weight of expectations from Others around me,、mm. and I had to sit with myself and make make sure that everything that I do is because I truly want to do it, and、mm. not because of an imposed expectation by、right. someone else. And that took maybe a year or two. Like it was not a quick or easy process. But after that, like it was like an upward slope, basically,、mm. like into just coming into who I am. And realizing that I will only continue to do things that spark joy or serve this purpose and this time period in my life, and if it no longer serves me, then I will have to say goodbye. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah. Oh my God, we gotta do this again. We have to. We gotta do this again. <laughs> Danielle, super grateful, but it can't be a year though. <laughs> <laughs> It won't be here. I、me. promise. I promise. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Check out my book, everyone. Available now on Amazon Canada and US. If you type in my name, Danielle Gator, it should come up. But it's called "They Never Told Us That Black Is Beautiful." Thank you. <laughs> Man, get the book. It is. It is really, really eye opening. And it's one of those things where you know you don't even know you have this internal self hate. Yes, that's it. You know, it's、that's、like it's it. there, but you don't even know. <laughs> yes, that's anyway, it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.